Welcome. You are listening or watching to Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. Uh, and today I am joined not by Jeremy, which has been something coming up recently, but you know, Jeremy's become incredibly busy. I've been incredibly busy. It's been hard to get stuff together. And so today I'm joined by huge friend of the show and often i mean you've been on so much craig we can almost call you a co-host at this point oh almost i'm the i'm the third wheel of this tricycle <laughs> the wobbly one that's right yeah that's me <laughs> so uh we're gonna get into a bunch of stuff here but uh i just want to make sure to remind everybody that whistle kick martial arts radio is where you can go to find all of our episodes they're all completely free we don't put any of our episodes behind a paywall um, if you wish to get more stuff, you can join our Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N uh, slash Whistlekick, uh, where you can get some behind-the-scenes stuff. There are some extra epi- bonus episodes that you can get. Um, and if you want to purchase something that Whistlekick does, we do uh, events. We host uh, a weekend-long seminar uh, in April. Plus, you can buy sparring gear and dragon hoodies of which i'm wearing one right now craig i see you've got a whistle kick shirt on there too i have i'm rocking the shield hoodie today nice nice uh and uh, at least for a limited time i'm not sure how long it'll be available you can go and purchase your exclusive kathy long three color dragon hoodie which is pretty amazing it actually has her signature in the hood uh and all of the profits from that particular hoodie will be donated to charity for the end of, uh, from now till the end of the year. So we're certainly excited to be uh, partnering with Kathy Long on that. But today, so cool. Craig, you and I, we're here to talk about how to be a helpful student. So we both teach in schools yeah. uh, and we have all heard and probably have our own stories of, quote, little Johnny or whoever like causes problems or does this or does that. And, you know, we all have those stories, but let's talk today about the, I don't want to say the good students because that, that that's the wrong word for it, but the students that have helped out in class and how we as instructors or um, people running our schools could be better served by having students doing X, Y, Z, or, you know, what would make our lives easier? Yeah, I, I think, the, and it's it's a twofold thing, because the other thing that's interesting, uh, as I'm thinking, at Marshall Summit, we had our team training that was filled with instructors for the core team, and we all were, we all, and it was interesting, because that's where we get to kind of kick around martial arts ideas, and how to be a helpful student is important for that, because there, you needed to remember you weren't the teacher, you were the student. So it can go either which way, I think, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm big. I've talked about it a bunch of times. If you've ever attended a Maddox session, you've heard me talk about it. Culture in your school is important and it gets created whether you want to focus on it or not. What either which way it's going to happen. Having helpful students along the way can really foster a healthy dynamic in your school. Um, if you encourage it properly, Mm. right? Yeah. Um, uh, Andrew, you and I, I think, are kind of known to be goofy <laughs> uh, once in a while. No. If you were at um, Free Training Day Northeast and heard the gong. <laughs> oh, that was great. That was pretty cool. Um, you know, and and sometimes we, we interpret helpful students as the ones who bring energy up. They're the funny ones or the domineering personalities. But they're not always the most helpful. Yep. Right. So, so it's a fine line, I think, to, as an instructor, to temper the helpfulness and the enthusiasm along with the productivity. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I am a goofy person by nature. I tell people often that I'm a mushroom because I'm a fun guy. <laughs> um, but. There is a time and a place for that, and I, I recognize that. And it has taken me a long time to figure out when the time and place is for that is, and I don't always get it right. But um, in a classroom setting, and, and I'm going to consider you know, teaching a martial art class as being a classroom. I use the word classroom, though it's not uh, you know, a, a, a typical classroom. 
Um, but in a classroom setting, whether it's a martial arts school or sitting in a math class, um, is not necessarily the time and place to make lots of cut up jokes and things like that as a student. Um, as a as an instructor, as a presenter, there are times where it is and is not okay in class, um, but you wouldn't want your you know hour long martial art class to be 45 minutes of you going through your stand up routine, right? Right. Um, and I think sometimes when I was younger, for sure, I didn't get that. You know, it was all about, uh, for lack of, I mean, it was all about me, but it was all about like making people laugh and because that made me feel good. Um, but that, as you mentioned, can be very disruptive to class. Yeah. And, and so I think the first thing we should do is kind of like what qualities or traits are helpful. Like what, what does make a helpful student for us anyway, I think is a good landing point because then at least, you know, we're talking off the same platform. So for me, a helpful student is one who is able to come alongside a classmate and help them improve either in their confidence or their physical skill. That's, that's how I would define it for me. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I think you'd say that's one aspect. I mean, there's going to be a, yeah. a, a bunch. Um, I think it's someone who can also read the room yep. and be able to determine what th what they could see to help out um, something as simple as uh, you know at the end of class uh, I'm you know shaking hands with students or whatever and, and a student notices a parent come in that clearly needs to talk to me but I haven't noticed you know like recognizing oh uh, you know sensei there's somebody here to see you or someone that's new. Maybe it's not even a parent. Maybe it's a, a stranger. They don't know, but clearly they're, they're clearly they're here to see me. Um, so I think both being able to recognize how they can help students and work alongside other students, I think being helpful in the school in general, it w would be something that's important too. Yeah, I think so. One of the things that was ingrained in me a long time ago when I was first training was, you know, if you're in the last class of the night, you're trying to get to the mop first. You want to take care of your space, right? You want to clean that, whatever it is, whether it's a, a space you're renting or a space that, that the school owns, whatever. It's you want to be able to be respectful of that space, that facility. And that, that in and of itself is helpful. You know, is it is it getting clean to the standard that we necessarily want? Maybe not, but it's a good start, you know? Yeah. And it's, yeah. A, it's beneficial for everyone. It helped, you know, as a teenager... You know, I could go and clean the mats at my school, but then not go home and clean my room didn't make sense. It taught me, you know, it, it taught me responsibility in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in our school, um, we currently now use the space in another facility. Uh, and so we don't do as much uh, cleaning after class as we used to when we had our own dedicated space. But it, we had at the end of every class, what in Japanese and Okinawan culture would be called sojido, which literally translates, I believe, as mindful cleaning. Um, and it was an opportunity for every student to do some cleaning, whether it was, like you said, mop the mats, uh, dust um, pictures that are on the wall, sweep up the entryway, sweep up outside so the outside of the school looks really good. Like all of these things help keep the school clean. Um, and you know, our philosophy in our school is that, you know, it's mindful cleaning. So there's not a ton of talking and fooling around while that's happening. You know, you are using that time to really think about what did we work on today in class? Like, what did we learn? What did I take away from it? Do I have any questions now that class is over and I'm thinking about what we worked on? Do I have any questions for sensei after class that I can ask him when I'm done with my cleaning or whatever? Um, but rushing to get to the mop or, you know, uh, I'm going to do mopping today or I'm going to do the dusting or whatever. Like those sorts of things help you to take ownership of your space. Um, could we, could I hire, could you hire a cleaning crew to come in and clean your facility? Absolutely. You could, um, could some people look at that and be like, that's, that's bull. Like you're getting free labor and you know, you shouldn't use your students that way. Okay. Yeah. You could look at it that way. And I will admit, I used to think of it that way when I was younger, I was like, man, I can't believe I have to clean the school. Like, you know, I pay money to be here. But now that I'm an instructor, 
And even when I wasn't actually, because this started at my at the school I'm at currently, when I wasn't an instructor, I was just a student. But I saw that it did allow me to take ownership of the school, and I took pride in it because it was mine. Uh, I, and I know we took kind of a little tangent sidetrack here on this one particular thing, but um, you know that that is an example of someone that, that you could do that you could choose to be helpful at. You see something that needs to get done in the school, you know, do it. Say, hey, can I do this? I heard a story once, I, and I don't remember if it's true or not. It's it, just a legend about Fumio Demura. Um, he would have a test when somebody wanted to come train with him. He'd crumple up a piece of paper, throw it on the floor before they got there. Right? And then one of three things would happen. They'd pick it up and throw it away. They'd walk by it. Or they'd pick it up, throw it away, and then let him know that they throw it away. And if they did, if they walked by it and just disregarded it, looked at it and kept walking, he didn't want to train with them because they weren't going to be helpful to the environment of the school. And then um, the if they walked by it and they told him, oh, Sensei Master, you know, I, I threw this away. I took care of it for you. He w- He said he cautioned them right after about seeking praise all the time. And so it's interesting. I don't, again, I don't know if it's true or not, but that story, I heard it 15 years ago. It stuck with me, you know, in my head of just do things to do things and be helpful. Um, I know as an instructor, one of the best, one of the most helpful things that for me is having students who are just excited to talk to other people that aren't in their class. Mm. Right. Um, you know, because we talk all the time, a higher rank, uh, at least in my school, and I'm sure other schools are, are similar. Um, you know, you are in a brown belt and the instructor says, well, now you need to make sure that you're a role model to the, re- the lower belts in the school. They want to, they're looking up to you. Mm-hmm. They want to get to that level. And then all they do is they see the brown belts bow onto the mat, train, bow off the mat, put their shoes on and leave. They never interact with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That you know, that, that can create a barrier as opposed to the brown belts talking to everyone, you know, just saying hi, checking in. If somebody looks like they're having a bad day, which this has happened. One of my adult students saw one of the um, middle schoolers crying in the shoe room and said, what's wrong? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. And the middle schooler talked to the adult student for a minute, you know, and just at the end, they both came and got me and we handled the problem. But it was good in that moment that there was a culture at which the adult student felt like they could help the younger student and the younger student, you know, felt comfortable enough that they were to receive the help from, in this case, a higher ranking person anyway. Um, You know, and to me, to me, that's the most helpful part because I can't be everywhere at the same time. No, I mean, as much as we want to be. You know, we, right. we can't. And, you know, the, the the scenario I mentioned at the very beginning, that's the one that comes up for me probably the most often is um, I am in the middle of doing something and someone comes in, especially in our last facility where we had kind of two rooms. Um, now the space that we're in, it would be difficult for someone to come in and not have myself or the instructors notice it. Um, but in our last facility, we, there were two rooms. And so you, it is conceivable that you could have come in the door quietly and, you know, just kind of sat down and we might not have been able to see you. Um, and so having, you know, we multiple times the students say, Hey, sensei, I'm not sure if you saw somebody came in. Oh, you know, because they were, you know, maybe I was in the bathroom or whatever. Um, and so right. those sorts of things, helping the school out. Um, and the, you know, the other thing I wanted to chat about is being ambassadors for the school. Like how can you be a helpful student? Um, you know, I'm a high school student and I hear from one of my friends that I want, they want to train. Oh, Hey, you know what? Come to, come check out a class, you know, like that is being helpful as well. Um, because that helps the culture of the school, helps the school grow. Um, and it's great to, it's great to train with friends, you know? Right. Yeah, and and to that point too, I think being an ambassador of the school by carrying yourself in a certain way, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, if you're wearing 
you know, your school's logo or like for us when we're wearing, if, to make a comment, we're both wearing whistle kick things and we go out and we start picking fights with every martial artist. That's not congruent into what we're working for. Sure, sure. Same thing in your school. You know, you have you have a responsibility uh, in, in an important way to be helpful is just carrying yourself in a way that aligns with the lessons of the school. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't make a mistake. Everyone's human makes mistakes, but you want to really try to align with the values um, that are being talked about in classes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing as an instructor that would be helpful that I would love is the students to go home and actually work on stuff. <laughs> That's um, I make a joke with my students that um, you don't have to practice every day. And I use this for my, my, my music students and my martial arts students. And especially in music, it's, it's really ingrained in students. Like you've got to practice every day. You've got to do it every day for like an hour and a half every day if you want to get good. And uh, I'm not a fan of that. I actually think that's harmful to be honest. Um, but I tell my students, you don't have to practice every day. You only have to practice on the days that you eat. <laughs> and then they say, but, but I eat every day. And I said, well, that's your problem. You're, you know, you have to figure that out. You know, if you don't want to practice tomorrow, you don't have to, but you can't have breakfast. You can't have lunch and you can't have dinner. It, you know, the, but at three o'clock when you're jonesing for a granola bar and you take that bite, you've got to practice. Now, obviously, I'm kidding, right? Obviously, should, right. Yeah, yeah. should a student practice every day? Yeah, in a perfect world, that would be great. Um, but I do not subscribe to the philosophy that you should practice for an hour and a half every day. Um, I think as a student, you will get so burnt out so quickly that it will become unfun. Uh, and I tell my students, practice for 10 minutes. Practice yes. for five minutes in the morning before you go to school. Practice for, you know, 10 minutes when you get home from school at the end of the day. Like, just those things alone will make a huge difference. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's just like coming to any class prepared. You you know, if if, if you think about it, and I did the math out with some of my friends once, you know, we, we talk about being frustrated sometimes, you know, why aren't they progressing as quick as I want them to and that sort of thing. And it's like, well you have to put in perspective if a student comes to class twice a week and say it's a 45 minute class, they're doing an hour and a half a week. That's, that's not that much time every month or every year that they're really able to put into it outside of practice. And one of the best things that I've, I've found is when I impart that to certain students who really, I know practice a little bit, um, they actually use that same point to the younger students, the, you know, equipping them to be helpful in a way by saying, look, you know, like you said, five minutes in the morning, five minutes a night, that's 10 minutes. It, sh it shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to run through whatever you did in the last class as a quick review. Yeah. And that would be very helpful for me as the person teaching material, because it will help make sure that you, it will help you to understand what's going on, you know, and that you will, the fact that you're going through your stuff will make you a better student just inherently, you know, uh, martial arts, the more you put into it, the more you, or you get out of it exactly what you put into it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you, do we have any uh, stories of interest or fun or interesting things that students have done to be helpful in the past? I mean, you mentioned, one earlier of the, the adult and the, the middle school kid. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I mean, I, you know me, I have, I have stories for every situation, right? So one story um, that pops in my head right away that I think illustrates, it illustrates this in a way um, is that a student I had was being bullied pretty bad at school mm -hmm. and other classmates heard about it and so they had a choice they could confront the bully right and, and pot potentially have a, a violent issue right where the bully decides to hit somebody or whatever or they could find a way to recognize the root of the problem because the root of the problem a lot of times in bullying is people begin to feel isolated and alone and unworthy of time right that's a common feeling 
So um, I had I had known about the bullying thing, but I watched as this group of kids kind of organically led by one just kind of took that that other kid under their wing and they were a couple grades ahead in high school and that kid ended up becoming best friends with them Mm. and so in a not specific to martial arts class way but in a martial arts community and representative of the school they found a way to help stem the problem that the school was handling with the bullying but also address the emotional need of of a classmate that they didn't really know that well yeah yeah that's great yeah I have the thing that happens the most often in our school and, you know, we, we teach our classes. You've seen the gym that we teach our classes in. Um, and there, there's a side door that we use to come in for class. And so that when you first walk in, there's a little landing, you know, by 10 foot by, you know, 15 foot. And then you go down some stairs, you can go up some stairs and, or you can turn and go into the gym and the kids class is happening before the adult class. And so adults will typically show up early and they'll go downstairs and they'll change and they'll come back up and they'll wait out in that kind of air airlock area that, that, you know, landing before coming into the gym. And the number of times that I see students helping each other doing kata in this really small space, but, you know, <laughs> other students helping other students out like, Hey, can we run through, you know, Shiho or um, I'm going through my blocks and I can't remember the like I remember the first five and I can't remember six, seven and eight. Like, can you help me with that? And so that happening organically outside of class in air quotes, because it's not in class. They're just outside while the kids class is going on. Like those sorts of things help to foster a good culture, but that's incredibly helpful because that, you know, if my higher ranked students, and I'm not talking the black belts are doing it, although they do that as well. But, you know, I'll have no problem looking out there and seeing a green belt helping a white belt out. You know, like, you, I'm okay with that. So just, yeah. you know, if you know something and can help someone else understand what it is they're trying to learn, that's great. Yeah, I, I think that's awesome. And and that's that speaks volumes to the culture you guys have that the green belts feel comfortable enough to help out, you know, and, and participate the way they do. I think... You know, one of the things we talk about in Matic is don't, uh, you know, don't, you know, punish someone for behavior you're trying to expect. So if you expect someone to be helpful, right, and you expect them to kind of look out for each other, and the minute that a student starts trying to coach, even if it's not the best coaching or one of the one of the nuances may be wrong, um, don't pull the kid aside and tell them you're wrong. Don't do that. Be, or the adult, whomever. Because what ends up happening is they're going to stop being helpful. Instead, you can say, you know, oh, wow, you know, I, I really appreciate you took the time to step up and, and help with that. That was awesome. Um, can I see you do that real quick? And then you correct the nuance on them. And then you say, you know what, don't worry about it. You helped them today. We, you know, we'll address this. But you correct the, the coaching nuance because either the person – didn't understand the technique and they were doing it wrong or they didn't understand how to explain the technique, but either way, it's a teachable moment for you to help the helpful person and give them that empowering moment to continue to do so. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think we've definitely given stuff for people to think about. Are there, I'm curious people watching or listening, if you have other things or tips or tricks or or other helpful things you expect your students to do, or that they do do, uh, let us know. Comment on, you know, you, if you're watching on YouTube, make a comment there. Um, we have a, a page, uh, Martial Arts Radio, on Facebook that you can go that this gets posted in. Um, you can always shoot me an email, Andrew at whistlekick.com. Um, you know, Craig, if you want to throw your email or I can send it to you if I get anything. Uh, anyone can add me on Facebook, Craig Wareham, and message me there. I'm happy to do that. That's easier for me most of the time than email. Perfect, perfect. But uh, is there anything we're missing? Like, not that I can think of off the top of my head. I think I think we kind of hit it. Be a good representative of the school. Take ownership of your space. Help empower others. Communicate. You know, and take the initiative of your own training. I think yeah. that that's. I think that those are that's all a good starting point. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, if you have any other thing for us, you know, let us know. There's a ton of ways you can get in touch with us. Uh, if you want to uh, message Jeremy or get Jeremy, you can get him at Jeremy at whistlekick.com. I already mentioned I'm at Andrew whistlekick.com. Um, or if you have a topic idea for an episode, um, this today's episode was actually um, a topic suggestion from uh, Chris Rickard in our uh, whistle, team whistlekick group here. Uh, he said, you should, guys should do an episode on that. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So if you have a, a suggestion for a topic, let us know. Um, or if you have a question for one of our rapid fire trivia or rapid fire questions for Jeremy, you can do that as well. Um, but I think we're going to call it, uh, we're going to call it quits there. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. <laughs>